Bonjour everyone, welcome to another Diecast Showcase. Uh, today we're going to be checking out uh, some uh, recent finds, a uh, bit of variety as, as usual. Um, we're going to be checking out a few loose cars uh, that I acquired, um, some rather uninsight, uh, rather unexciting, some a little bit more exciting. And uh, after that we'll delve into a few uh, Matchbox mainlines I found and uh, finish off with a couple premiums. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Starting off, as usual, with the loose cars. So, um, if I start off with like uh, more or less interesting cars, I did manage to pick up um, <clears throat> one of the uh, Soul um, license recent recent licensed Matchbox uh, Matchbox sorry Hot Wheels um, uh, NASCARs and uh, be the 2010 Chevy Impala right here. Definitely not the best cast. I mean, this should be a little bit lower in the front, but it's not. It's just raised as to clear the uh, orange track and the, not stay stuck. Um. You know, orange, some uh, yellow rimmed wheels, got the roll cage and the netting detail, the venting of the Lexan uh, rear windows, you know, just your basic, ma ma you know, uh, NASCAR with the uh, Hot Wheels themed livery, you know, nothing uh, to cry home about, but it's a casting I didn't have, and, uh, you know, it is licensed, as you can see on the bottom, so... Older casting too. I'm gonna to be 15 years old next year. So, yeah, got that. You know, yippee ki yay, whatever. Um, next up, I did also manage to find another color variation. I'm not sure I'm gonna be keeping this one, uh, but this uh, custom uh, uh, Ford Maverick. Uh, I don't know. I probably have three other color variations of this specific cast the one i would really like is the uh gretty livery one that's um uh the song kang one that would be really cool uh to find eventually especially the white variation which i really like and which would be song kang's uh, own car basically um but yeah this one's pretty cool you know it's like a nice that nice uh hot wheels dark blue with the yellow stripes and the yellow h5s um very dirty inside i uh have yet to emerge this thing in some water to remove the gunk in with the uh, within the inside of the window. Paint's definitely not flawless. Um, got a chrome base on this one. 71 Maverick Grabber. Oh, it's not the cut. Yeah, oh, yeah. I always conf get confused with the custom V8 Vega and the uh, Maverick Grabber, which are both uh, cars that are directly in competition. But yeah, it's a nice cast. Easy to detail. Um, you know. It's another one. It's not perfect, so I might not retain this one. I might just uh, dump it in the for sale for trade lineup of bags. Um, next up, this one's pretty cool. Um, it is, uh, well, it looks like a fantasy casting, but it's actually not. So it's uh, this little guy here. So it's a little uh, Fiat Topolino uh, drag car. Uh, this one, the wing had detached from the back, as you can see. I kind of re-secured it in place with a tiny, uh, with a tiny bit of uh, persuasion there. Fit it back into the back of that uh, roll cage. Uh, it's a pretty cool cat. I mean, the front axle is pretty shot, honestly. It's just, yeah, it needs a wheel swap. It would look great with some big, gra uh, big, uh, big tires on the back and uh, some skinnies on the front, just to make it uh, a little bit better. But what I really like about this, the plastic part here in gold. That uh, you know makes the open header exhaust and uh, the motor and, and then the interior with the steering wheel and all that. That's plastic, but the body as well as the base is metal. So you can see it's Fiat 500C. Um, definitely looks more like a Topolino based on the grill. So that's definitely not a the Fiat 500 didn't even have a grill, but hey, that's just me. Uh, either way, either way, pretty cool with that big big downforce wing. Um, yeah, good looking car. And uh, I'm sure with the tampa removal, that green paint would really pop with the gold uh, finished uh, everything, including the wheels that would definitely need a refinishing. But then again, this actually needs a wheel swap. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, 
Next, I have um, the umpteenth Ford GT40 that I'm adding into the collection. This one has a livery that's really reminiscent of that uh, Stars and Stripes series, basically, that's been uh, going on for a couple of years now, two or three, three years now, I think. Uh, it's now part of the Silver Line, uh, Silver Series or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, so this one is in average shape. It's a variation it didn't have. Pretty sure I'll keep it because I do love the Ford GT40, especially this one's a Mark One. So there you go, Ford GT40, copyright 1999, Thailand. So if I'm not mistaken, I think this may be part of a multi pack. And I like this cast because it does have the mirrors, which is really cool. Um, big uh, Red OH fives. Lack of details front and rear, which is typical for this era of Hot Wheels, where graphics on the side were prioritized over the graphics on the top. Uh, one that I do really like and that I do have a few variations of, but it's just one of those castings that I can't help myself I find when I gotta get it. And yet another beautiful 55 Chevy, my favorite of the Tri Fives, with a nice slammed slash raked stance. It's just one of those cars. Hot Wheels just got it right with the stance. And this one actually has a lot of detail on it. Uh, we've got some, let's just refocus here. There we go. Front details, badge lights, a little bit of black for the grill, the uh, turn indicators. Got all the bright work on the side, as well as some kind of like uh, pinstriping. And of course the Hot Wheels logo, door handles. And it's done on the rear too, with the logo. Well, the rear lights are kind of knackered a little bit. They need to be redone there, but, you know, paint's not perfect, but it's still a four tempo pass car, which is, I believe, pretty rare. I'm not sure which series this is from, but if we look on the bottom, uh, yeah, Malaysia base, 55 Chevy, and there is no copyright date, making me guess this might be a multi-pack car. I don't know. Either way, very nice car. Very cool. I'll need to do some research on where this comes from. Um, so, yet another variation of that. Um, then I did find this. This this is probably... Well, I'll show you my top three of the loose cars that I found. This is one of my nicer finds. Um, the, 99, uh, the 997 GT2. So, twin turbo rear wheel drive. Uh, it does have a factory flashing issue in the rear arch, which you can probably see. And it causes the wheel to rub here. It still still rolls, but it just doesn't roll very freely. So, yeah, kind of weird. I thought at the beginning it was like kind of crud stuck in the wheel or something, but it's literally the metal that's flashed inside the wheel arch for the driver's side rear wheel. Um, other than that, paint's okay. Uh, it's complete. It's got the front and rear tampos, as you can see. Chrome PR5s because Hot Wheels lens fronts on this cast since it's part of the glass portion. Porsche logo on the front black base. There you go. Another cast is going to be 15, uh, 15 years old uh, next year. So that I find really cool. Um, one that I find really cool as well. It's definitely not in, a, in the best of shape, but I mean, for its age... I think it held up pretty darn well. It's really, really cool Chevy Monte Carlo stock car. And it's the Aero Coupe with the uh, kind of like semi-hatchback type of looking window, which uh, 84, 85, I believe they experimented with this. And it was for NASCAR, basically, to make it more aerodynamic, hence have a higher top speed. Casting's very basic. Well, I mean, it is old. It's an old cast. It's a classic black wall. Uh, with the staggered uh, tire profile, front and rear, but the same sized wheels, which is awesome. Full roll cage in there. And, you know, the window treatment that you would expect from a NASCAR. Yeah, so two NASCARs. But it's got an all-black enamel paint job and a metal base. So this one's a Malaysia base, 1986 copyright. I think it's 86 anyways, but it's pretty tarnished, so. 
Very cool. Very cool. This was one I did not have as a kid. And I'm wondering if there were actually tampos on this originally that may have just faded over time. Doesn't seem to be a repaint. Although it could be, you never know. But, uh... Yeah. Paint's held up pretty good. You know, it definitely, uh... Definitely been dropped a few times on its top there, but it could be a repaint. You never know. It could be. I don't know. Well, either way, it's cool in black and all black with no uh, livery. So, and last loose find is uh, one's definitely vintage. Got this Yat Ming Formula One car. It's not a licensed car, although it's kind of like one of those. They had the licenses. They produced it under license. Then they cheaped out the brand as a whole. Went from metal to plastic base and uh, kind of cut down on the licensing. Kept keep, keeping the casting, just didn't call it uh, what it was in reality. Example of this is the old uh, Ferrari F1 car I have that's part of the same series, metal base Ferrari 312. And I had it also on a plastic base, but it was unbranded at that point. This, I do not have any type of branding underneath, but it is a metal base as well, made in China, Yatming. Uh, so metal on metal with a plastic engine. And plastic details for the driver and the uh, little windscreen. Paint held up pretty darn well. This is probably from the 80s. Maybe mid-late 80s, something like that. And uh, so, I mean, it is going on 40 years old, 35, 40 years old. So, not bad. Most of the chrome still on those uh, horrible wheels that were used on all these F1 cars in period. Well, the Yatming F1 cars, not the real ones, obviously. Um, but yeah, I like the shade of green. And uh, the tampo work is all intact. It's not a sticker. Because a lot of these had stickers. And uh, those, well, obviously, they won't last the test of time if they're actually played with. And uh, yeah, so this one is a tampo. Very rudimentary tampo, but still a tampo nonetheless. So that's the last loose find. Did manage to uh, pick up, as mentioned, a few matchbox. So... Um, We'll start with the one I found first. Found this in a Walmart. Um, so it's part of a uh, convertible series. I believe it's all, is it all American convertibles? Yeah, pretty much. Here's the series in question. If ever you're curious to know what's in here. So you've got uh, the Camaro, which there's like a gazillion color waves of, including one that came out in the most recent Matchbox case uh, that's blue with white stripes and uh, the white five-spoke wheels just like depicted here. You got the Camaro convertible, which I have a version of in a nine-pack in brown, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe in a five-pack. Either way, I have this one, so I didn't pick that one up. Uh, the good old uh, 19 Mustang convertible, again, got one of those, loose. Um, probably one carded somewhere too in, or in a multi-pack. This Buick I have on a single. It was the same color in a light blue, so I didn't pick that one up because it's literally just a recard. This is the one we're going to be looking at. Only one that was missing, the only one that I would have taken. I believe this is a new casting, the 63 Corvette convertible. I don't think I have a 63 Corvette convertible. I know Hot Wheels does a, does a 65. I don't think I have a 63, so that would have been a nice addition. And it's got those uh, cool uh, sport uh, tri-spoke wheels. They'll look great on these kind of cars, so we'll see. Eventually, maybe I'll stumble upon it, but it seems to be the one everybody's grabbing. Whereas the Cadillac here is kind of like a peg warmer. I just wanted to pick this one up uh, to open it, because the other one I have is out of that uh, Cadillac-specific uh, series. I believe Walmart-exclusive series. I had a like a kind of burnt orange one, and it has like a, a quality control issue on the front wheel where the chrome overlaps well beyond the lip of that rim so you know this one is in green my favorite car for my favorite car color with a nice uh, very slightly off-white interior so we're gonna get this one open just to put it in the lineup and this is a era cadillac that i really like because cadillacs before the advent the, the the advent of the new millennia or the 2000s there was absolutely nothing sporty about them. Closest to a sporty Cadillac being uh, maybe the STS Coupe. Um, from the, there was uh, the generation up to 98 there uh, with the North Star. 
front wheel drive, even the Eldorado, even in the ETC, the Touring Coupe trim had the same 300 horsepower, 4.6 liter North Star. Not very sporty because they were front wheel drive, they were heavy, and you know, they were sportier than other Cadillacs, but you know, that's like saying that, you know, Burger King is slightly less calories than McDonald's. Still, both are still pretty bad. So, either way, um, the Cadillac Eldorado. So, this is like the Malaise era, like the fuel crisis era, uh, 1975 model. Beautiful green. Beautiful green. Not a whole lot of tampos front and rear. You do have the side details, and the front is chrome, so... I mean, it, work, it still works well, honestly. It still works well. I definitely like it. It seems small, honestly, as I did pick up a similar model year Cadillac Eldorado from Greenlight for their part of their anniversary series there. And uh, it does look bigger. So this might be like in the 170-something scale as opposed to 160-something scale. Uh, still three inch, obviously, but this is just such a boat, such a boat that basically, uh, oh, let's check the base quick, quick here. There you go. 2020 cast license. So 2021 release, first release for this casting. Yep. 75 Cadillac Eldorado. It's pretty cool. I like it. It's got details where it counts, pretty much, just like Matchbox does so well. All right, next up uh, is going to be some carded stuff, and we won't be opening uh, the rest of uh, the eight vehicles we're going to be looking at. So I'll uh, be brief because, you know, some of the castings are more or less, you know, interesting. I just wanted it because it's a model that is kind of, you know, unusual or new, a new cast, actually, should I say. So this is a new cast for 24. The Citroën uh, E-C4. So, yeah, C4 electric. So, like, kind of like a compact compact car. I believe this is about the size of, like, a Civic, Corolla, Mazda 3, you know, kind of size. And, uh, yeah, it's got cool details on the front. Very well done. And it's got cool details on the front um back really well done five spokes and i mean i did pick up the megan the the renault megan uh that came out the wave before this one i believe or maybe the wave prior to that so i mean these that that'll go well together you know it's going to make a great pair and i love pairing my die casts to go well together so you know why not pick that one up i did pick up also um this new color variation of the um Porsche Macan from Matchbox in this super nice metallic orange. Very nice metallic orange. Uh, simply because it's a cast that I don't have. And I believe the first release of this was actually a Super Chase. So, yeah. Didn't, never found that Super Chase specifically. Actually, I uh, only found one in the last couple of years. So, But yeah, seemingly it is a Macan S. Only the one rung above the base model. Um, so it does have the, the twin turbo six, but with the, with the low pressure turbos, uh, it's got the, um, black chrome, uh, five spokes, which shoots, suits this model very well. It's got very nice details in the front, as you can see, same for the rear, including the trim level, which is great. I love this about matchbox. You can actually figure out what trim level it is by checking on the badging. It's got panoramic sunroof, black base. You know, just another one of those cars to want to make a diorama and make a, you know, street scene with some traffic parked uh, besides the sidewalk. It's right perfectly in place. Um, so, uh, next one it falls pretty much into that category as well. Another SUV and another new casting for 2024. The uh, Jeep Wagoneer. So, the new model. One of the uh, three-row big SUVs. You know, it was pretty mundane. You know, not a whole lot to say about it. It's a good cast. It has the two big sunroofs. It's 
Got nice uh, tempos. It's got the off-road six spokes that uh, are pretty common on the Matchbox lineup. And uh, it's got a nice uh, dark metallic uh, red, like a ruby or Bordeaux or whatever red there. It's a nice red. Quite common for uh, Matchbox um, Matchbox cars. So that's the current gen, basically. So 2022 and up. And uh, what I find cool about this case is that they kind of pulled the then and now. Another new uh, casting is the 64 Wagoneer, which is in this case the one I was most looking forward to in addition to the last one we're going to check out for the card and matchbox stuff. So uh, it's the OG Wagoneer, whereas the previous one we looked at was the last Wagoneer. It's not selling too well, so it might actually be the last Wagoneer. So this one has got um, slightly blue tint to the windows, a nice uh, kind of slightly pearlescent white, very nice front tampos, very nice rear tampos. Unfortunately, you can see that big, big uh, pole in the back there for the rivet uh through those windows but i mean it is what it is there i mean it's a dollar car these are a dollar 75 at my dollar store so that's under two bucks with tax and uh for two bucks i mean two bucks canadian which is what like 50 cents uh us at this point in time no just kidding uh it's probably like a dollar 25 or something like that um yeah tow hook too which is great that means you can play around with the uh matchbox or whatever other brand trailers you have so that's definitely one i was very excited for because that's it's very iconic and just the fact that they released both the newest and the first uh, version is a really cool idea i find last but not least in the matchbox this guy I was waiting for if uh, you've been uh, following my channel you'll probably know i love my nissan it's my favorite car brand not for the current models obviously but for the models of the past you know 75 years let's say awesome awesome models were released especially in the 80s and 90s and this is one of them 85 nissan pathfinder three door so nissan Tirano in other uh, countries part of the world um very very cool very cool uh the three door version was this gen only uh for north america after that they did not make two doors anymore they went to the four door for the following version came with the ka24e or the vg30e v6 3 liter or 2.4 liter truck engine you'd find in the 240sx well from this truck basically that and the d21 hard body same chassis as the d21 basically so uh yeah cool little truck very nice tampo work on the back would have been cool if they stamped some silver on that uh, spare wheel but still very nice Nice job on the front, including that offset older school Nissan badging before uh, they changed the logo a little bit later on in the late 80s. So this was literally just after Nissan stopped being called Datsuns and Datsun by Nissan and then Nissan Datsun dual badging and whatnot there. So yeah, this is a very cool one and again new for 24 so that's pretty cool yeah so very happy i managed to pick one of these up fresh drop a matchbox there no super chase you know what a surprise but i don't really mind it's okay it's okay to not pick up chases all the time uh i don't fret about that um now i did pick up also um two green light cars out of my one of my favorite series, actually, should I say, is I uh, there's a lot of favorite series I have for the green light lineup, honestly. Um, so we are talking about the vintage ad cars, which I find really great because the actual card art is the vintage ad in question. Um, and uh, that's just something that's really cool. So series 10 is on the pegs currently. And I was lucky enough to find the Chevy Suburban Silverado, the first year. 1981 for the square body uh the square body version of it um as you can see in this little ad here uh very cool same uh, specs as the ad uh except for the tires that are wide white walls um on the ad and they're just regular white walls uh, on the truck itself the die cast 
no sunroof. I don't know what type of trim level this is or anything like that, but it's got a silver with a lower uh, kind of like burgundy or dark red lower body cladding with a matching red interior. And in 1981, red interiors were very popular. And when talking about red, everything's red. Except for, you know, the, the buttons for climate control and the radio, basically. And potentially the, uh, you know, the rear view mirror, basically, that's inside the car. So either way, very cool casting. Was looking forward to find this one. I had found it in the... Smokey the Bear Only You Can Protect Forest Fire series, but uh, not a big fan of the livery that was on. Never found the one that I really wanted, which I believe is part out of the Blue Collar series. That was a later Spec 87 with the um, nicer wheels, in my opinion, for a truck. More trucky wheels, basically. Uh, and a paint job that was, you know, a little bit less retro. Um, and there's also a black banded version that looks pretty badass, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty content with having this version. I think it's fine. Pretty happy to add it to the collection as it's a casting. I do not have, I do not have any Suburbans of this generation from Greenlight or anybody else. Another new casting that I had yet to add and that there's already several releases of by Greenlight is this beautiful 46 Ford Super Deluxe convertible. And if you look at the ad, it's actually an ad for Chevron, the uh, gas station chain. So vintage ad for Chevron that features this car. And, you know, it's a stock looking car on the ad. But if you look at the actual model, it is slammed. It is lowered. And it's not surprising because there was a release of this in an alternate colorway uh, in the California Lowriders uh, most recent series. It has a flame job, which I'm not a fan of. This is like all stock looking but lowered, which is great. There's also a regular height one, I believe, that's part of the home improvement uh, Tim Allen line of cars. Um, I don't remember what the color was on that one. And I know that there's also a light blue one that's part of that anniversary series that I was referring to for the, uh, I don't know which anniversary of Ford, basically. Um, and it's like this, but in light blue believe it's hard top too as opposed to convertible i'm not opposed to this convertible because it has a dark tan contrasting interior with it to that pastel or not past sorry gloss orange with the color-coded steelies and poverty caps white wall tires got a separate piece for the steering wheel that has air passing through it and that uh inner uh the inner uh horn ring very nice details as one would expect from green light with the chrome inserts for the bumpers the painted details for the grill and lights the bright work on the side and the nice little rear details including a little 19 a 1946 license plate so that's pretty cool so if anybody asks you what year this car is you can just point to your license plate say a 46 so that's pretty cool. Last piece that I picked up that's going to conclude this showcase. It's already almost 30 minutes. Is a M2 Machines. I really don't pick up M2 all that often. And I try and make sure it's a casting either that's new or that I don't have yet. So this one I kind of succumb because I do love patinaed cars. Look at this piece. A Gasser Studebaker 2R pickup truck. Um, I had one of these. That was more like stock looking with a really funky, uh, almost kind of like Spectra Flame yellow paint that I actually sold. Uh, and it was, uh, uh, I believe, an auto driver. Was, uh, oh, no, actually it was an auto kit with the uh, extra wheels, the screwdriver and all that stuff. Um, so that I sold and I did not have the Studebaker 2R uh, cast anymore. Saw this in my local Walmart, had to have it. It's gloriously patinaed. Uh, lots of rust. Um, actually, if I were to give a, a smart-ass name to this truck for the drag strip, I'd probably call it the primer peeler, which I find is pretty funny. Because, uh, I mean, literally the primer looks like it looks like it's falling off in, in mounds. I, they really did a good job doing the patina on the bumpers. 
kind of hard to see there, but they just added like tiny little rust details. You got a little tank on the front as usual, the reason why it's called a gasser. And here's your rear, again with that nicely patinaed bumper and the 1950 license plate, because this is a 1950 model. There were two of these. The other one had a slightly better box, because this one has a tiny crease on the side, which honestly I don't care. Um, but uh, you always do a shake test with them too. You're supposed to hear parts moving, because that's normal. It's got opening parts and everything like that. And uh, to make sure that it's not screwed on too solidly to the base, which could actually damage and deform parts of the car. But uh, I saw right away that the rear axle on the other one was just flopping around. So it was not attached properly. Easy fix because these are, you know, screwed together. So you can take them apart and customize them as much as you want with other M2 or other brand parts. Um, but this one was good, you know, besides a little crease on the box box which is really cool because they made a rusty box with the old Studebaker script yep two R series trucks there's a lot of different releases of this in so many different varieties so there you go that's pretty much my haul for this time I uh, hope you enjoyed checking it out with me um, if you did uh, you know hit that like leave me a comment uh, which one is uh, your favorite um, have you found this wave of matchbox in your area? Uh, you guys into green lights and M2s? Yeah, just let me know. Love uh, reading your comments. Um, yeah, so uh, on that, I'll let you go. Wish you the best of luck on the pegs. Happy hunting. Take care. Stay safe. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.